do 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 Welcome to the podcast. We. All right, welcome to Sequel Podcast. I'm at Bonta. I'm Sean Laws. That's Mom. You're gonna get familiar with my voice. So uh, this may be like. Days apart from the last one, the one before that, but literally we've been sitting here for like three hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll give you guys a break. You won't have to listen to it all at once. <laughs> so, but you we're... may want to. Um, you may call us back and tell us, don't stop now when we're done. Okay, this could be a series. Okay. So, uh, we last left off with um, Ma'am having Stacy, Stacy dying, uh-huh. her not being with Jack Rose. Uh-huh. And the way I guess we're going to talk about I know, see, look, at, this is where I should have my dad come talk about this. <laughs> come sit over here and just talk. Because he just sits there and he'll just talk and talk and talk and talk. Because this is where. He said he was like at the hospital when Stacy died and everything. He was just was he really? There. Yeah, yeah. They, they buried him with, he, my dad gave him a little mouse. He called it Marty Mouse. And he, they buried him with that. How old was he? Uh, my dad. He was young. I think he, they had me when I was, he was 16, 17. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mom was older. Yeah. Yeah. Can you stop this for a second while we go get him home come over for a few minutes or no? Yeah, sure. Okay, um, yeah. Well, I'll have a... Tasia. Get in here. Tasia, you're up. You're huh? talking again. You're talking because I gotta get my desk so you gotta come and get so there's no air, no uh... uh Dead air. W- white noise. We don't need no white noise. Is that what it's called? Tasia's back to talk again. Yeah. Maybe I'll just call him. I'm gonna call him first. Oh, uh, she's gonna call, I guess. Let's see. Okay. So what's been happening since we last talked to you? Just sitting on my phone. <laughs> really though. I was just looking at pictures of everybody's Christmas? Yeah, all their Christmassy pictures. I've got a lot of activity in the last couple days. More so than I have usually yeah. on my Facebook page. But all the stuff you've been posting? Uh, I can't talk to well, I mean that, you know, some shit that I posted and then you know. Yeah, I guess that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. Everyone's just liking all these statuses and everything. Yeah. Okay. Love you. I think this gift was pretty funny of Michelle. Because I actually could have gave it to Sam. Uh, Sam probably wouldn't even played it. Is he coming over? Yeah, he's coming over. Let me move this. Um, Thank you, Matt. That's cool, too, because this is going to be good for him. To, he likes to talk to you, and nobody listens to him either. <laughs> You've met him? Yeah. Or dad? Yeah, we stayed over there when we first went here. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think he's weird? No, he's just a lot to take in. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's a... Yes. He's nice, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a weirdo. Yeah, he's pretty weird, but he's not that bad. I guess is what I'm trying to say. I guess. I suppose. <laughs> You're getting a lot of airtime here on these podcasts. I'm so, waiting. You just met me. I don't really know about a lot about podcasts. You do this all the time, or what? I try to do it once a week. And a lot of you. And does this show you like how many people listen? Yeah, I mean, I post them on YouTube as videos. Um, but it's really just audio. All the video shows is the date, what episode it is, and who's on it. Right. So, so you just you just get like like your friends listeners like just random because it's YouTube. Um, well, I put it on YouTube, and I mean, if it's random, it's random, but I, I post it on Facebook whenever I post it at the same time, so if someone of my oh, friends okay. looks at it, they'll click on it, or, you know, I'll tag whoever did the podcast with me, mm-hmm. and maybe one of their friends will click on it and listen to it or yeah, something. Yeah, listen to it, yeah, exactly. So I mean, I think the most I've gotten is like eight, between eight and twelve, I think there might be one with twelve. Right on, no, that's cool though, you, you know. So but that doesn't, get this, them. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean that someone sits around for an hour and listens to it. Right, they could just listen a little bit. And- but I know, I know Patrick listens to him. Uh, my friend Donna's been listening to him, and Melissa listens. Kelly might listen. So, I know some people yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, I know that, that listen to it. That's cool. <laughs> I just I just wasn't sure. I've never done a podcast before, you know? So, yeah. So, that's what I do when I'm not making a movie. And even when I'm making a movie, I'm trying to, you know... Get actors involved, keep people updated with what's going on. Mm. That's cool. We have hobbies. I don't have a lot of hobbies. It's really just an excuse to get together with friends and bullshit for an hour and see what's going on. Yeah, because everybody's just talking. 
Because normally, you, what you say, oh, come on, but it's just all talk. Pretty much. That's, that's, that's like a better way of saying it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, do it or... I'm good friends with Kelly, but I don't get to see her that often, so she'll come over and sit down and we'll talk for a couple hours and then she'll take off. Right on. And we just catch up. You know, because when, we when we're making a movie, we see every we see everybody. Yeah, I see you guys all together. Very often. Mm -hmm. And then when we don't make a movie, it's just like we stop talking, stop seeing people. So yeah, it's like, like a hey, big break. <laughs> this is like, come over. Once in a while, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Pretty much. What happened to mom? Mom! Jimmy? What's going on? Oh, hold on. Still looks like X-Men over there. No, 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 that's okay. Maybe I'll do like a little missile right here. <laughs> That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. That would and then, work. And then it'll all show up see more Christmas you know? Yeah. Because if I would have done Christmas, I wouldn't have the room to do it. Yes. Now I have room to make a missile too. Yes. Oh, well, it looks like you got some black on there. On my arm? No, on the, the red part right there in that empty space. Oh, yeah, a little bit. That's okay. I'll go a little Turn that into mistletoe. Yeah, exactly. This is all dead air. So you're going to go back to... Reno? Reno on Saturday. You get to get to work on Saturday? Yeah, I have to work on Saturday. So yeah, you go back tomorrow. I'm back tomorrow. Gonna get to ride in the car with Nicole and Michelle. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so bad. It wasn't so bad with Steph and Mom on the way up. Yeah, it's not bad. Just, usually it's Sam and he's like, God, because we all talk a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there was definitely a lot of talking. Right. He'll be coming back. We we'll, can we'll carry on. So what were you guys thinking about? Nothing really. Nothing really. See, she works here. here you go. See, she's a talker. See, she's like mom, so that helps. <laughs> you can sit down right here, Dad. Go ahead. You can sit down right here. I see right here. I'm over here. What's going on? We're gonna, we want your information. Well, I guess we don't want my information. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we don't want my information. <laughs> Okay, we're um. This is my dad, Marty Evanson. He's Matthew's grandfather, and we're gonna question him. And he's gonna carry on with a little bit more of our family history. <laughs> that was like his name. And if you can see his face right now, he's like, wait a minute. I I, I thought we were just reminiscing. I don't want to be like they're greed here. There's some shit I might no, not tell them. No, I know that. No, no, I'm just joking. You gotta remember, I I got into the family in the '60s. You yeah, know? see, yeah, that's what we want to know. We want to know where you where you came in. How old was mom, and what was grandma doing? Would start like that when you met them. What was going on? So just start talking. Well, I, well, I bet you, Bob, your mom was had Stacy. Uh -huh. He was just a baby. And uh, she was going to marry Mark Kemp. Okay. He was my best friend. Okay. Well, then one day I went over there to meet Mark Kemp, and he wasn't there yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I was sitting on the couch, and Kathy goes, "Kiss me." <laughs> and I said, "You're engaged to marry my best friend." <laughs> I said, well, this makes you want to change fucking clear. If I kiss you, I'm going to tell him. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to do nothing behind the back of nothing. I'm going to suggest to him he don't marry you. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, we kissed him. That's one thing. That's another. That, that was that. <laughs> and then later that day, Mark Kemp come over. And I said, I got to tell you something, dude. <laughs> I, said, uh, I don't think it'd be very wise for you to get married. Uh -huh. What are you talking about? <laughs> I said, well, I just had sex with her. <laughs> and, 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 and I said, but you're my friend, you know. And I said, I try not go along with this. So I'm just telling you up front, you know. We do with the do with it, however we gotta deal with it. Uh -huh. He jumped on his little motorcycle racing down the corner wrecked him. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't he went off. 
<clears throat> my mother back in them days, your mom was always quiet. Your mom was always a homebody. Uh -huh. Your mom was always intimidated by her mother. Uh -huh. And your mother, on the other hand, was you know, about 42 or so, and wild. <laughs> Uncle Long was wild. They still in the biker days. And drugs were in the 60s. It was Bob Bitsman's up with the Downers. <laughs> and Myrna was. I hadn't even gotten high before I met Myrna. <laughs> <laughs> And then from there, I just kept told Gopher, because he just kept puffing Gopher, you know, <laughs> fucking stealing crack cards, doing all that crazy shit. <laughs> and all along, Walter, <laughs> who I have not one bad word to say, but nothing but respect for that man. That's the that crap he put up with me. <laughs> I mean, I, I never could understand it, you know. He was just so upstanding, so straight, and so serious, and, you know, just those. See, he knows Poppy too when he was young at times when I did. Yeah, he was. You know, so, you know. How old were you? How old was I? I was 15. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, so, we went on and on about that. You know, so I moved in the house immediately with Kathy and Stacy and Walter and Myrna. Well, Walter just loved Stacy. That was that, you know. He always wanted a boy. He yeah. He stuck with Kathy, but yeah, that's why when you came along, there was no if, ands, or buts who was going to raise you. Yeah. There, was, there was not. Nobody had a say in that. Not her, not nobody was going to have a say in that. <laughs> I don't care. But uh, I mean, for the most part of the part of the times, West Myrna getting a lot of fights, created a lot of problems, wrecked a lot of cars. Wrecked a lot of cars, shoot drugs for the DMV. Yeah, that was her first trip to the nut house. We was coming back from LA. Yeah, we wanted to find out why she went to the nut house, and I thought it was over. I couldn't remember when it was over. That, that was her first trip. Before that, she was going to jail and out of jail. <laughs> so just petty shit driving and getting wrecks and all this. Wrecked every car she ever touched. Every car that I remember. Wrecked every car Walter ever bought. <laughs> Man, Walter bought some nice cars, you know, pretty nice cars. Many, many old wrecked. <laughs> he sold the house. They bought the house house over on Jesse Avenue. That's where we all lived. Mm -hmm. Well, Myrna sold it right out from under him. When Stacy died, right? Yeah, well, when Stacy died, that was a big, big day. I mean, he was about two and a half years old. But he got sick because he was, he was sitting in the living room one day. And me shouted to pick him up. And when they touched him, he just went into hysterics. Just like, just unbelievable. Like, this ain't normal here. Mm -hmm. So we took him to the hospital, because he took him to the hospital, and they said, well, he's got the flu. I well, was taking him back home, but he couldn't touch him. He would just scream like he was in agony or pain. I said, no, nah, this kid got more than the flu. There's something wrong with this kid. But then they, go, and then they said, well, he's got a brain tumor now. Okay. So they got to operate. Well, they operated, but he died. Yeah. You know, he died. Yeah. Which was hard. Kathy was, a, his dad was Jack Rose. Mm -hmm. Is he, did he die? We were talking about him. I didn't know much about, after they kind of separated, if he, I didn't know much about the relationship. With Jack Rose? Yeah. Well, he basically left his mother. Yeah, so, yeah that's what you I thought. He was a friend of your mom and uh -huh. Uncle Lawrence, and uh -huh. uh, like that. But he got a plan but then he just split on her, basically. Yeah, yeah. When he died, she wanted to search for him. Uh -huh. I said, that's why if you want to search for him, uh -huh. you know, to tell him why, but she never found him or nothing. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know if he died or didn't die. But like we were talking, he was much older than mom, so he's probably well, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're talking an old guy. Yeah, yeah. And a young girl, you know. Yeah, yeah. But when I met your mother, she was still, still 16. Yeah, yeah. You know, but not quite 17, because she's a little older than me. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but she had Stacy. She, he was about six months old when I me and him got together. He yeah. lived to be about two and a half. Yeah, that's why I was talking about. You were like his dad, yeah. But Stacy was Walter's whole life. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, if and or much about it. Yeah. And Myrna at the time was just wild, caused all kinds of troubles. And then she, she hooked up with a guy named Tony West. Yeah, you yeah. got well, this dude was just off his fucking rocker. He was, excuse my language. No, no, no for it, yeah. He was just off his rocker. I mean, long-haired biker dude. They all fucking, but just, 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 just a complete fucking asshole. Okay. <laughs> well, he also had a girlfriend. 
that was in the nut house. <laughs> and he'd get her out on the weekends, but she was a hypnomaniac. What's that? You know, oh, woman, can't have, I'll have sex with him. Oh, they, 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 they never met okay, yeah, okay, yeah. She was one of them, so mm -hmm. he would keep her locked in a truck when he'd bring her home on the weekend for the nut house. Hey, you have your fucking mind, you can't be doing this to this woman. <laughs> you know? But I mean, he was a big dude, you know, I didn't want no part of him. <laughs> and so, uh, Lost bitch up if you want. So, <laughs> so her and Walter, this is the only time I ever seen Walter get aggressive. <laughs> After Stacy died, and then she started running around with Tony West, and not paying the bills like she was supposed to, the power was getting cut off, and everything was happening. Next day, you know, there's a knock on the door, and the house has been sold. And Walter's going, what? <laughs> Walter was you know? Sam's or my grandma's? Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah. Walter, so Walter moved out, but, but he was on the phone calling about the fine place to live. Uh -huh. And Myrna says, get off that phone, get off that phone. He said, you better get away from me. And she got the, he turned around and smacked her in the eye with that phone black in her eye. Oh, First time I ever seen Walter ever just, just react. But hell, he just got his house sold out the mother. He's like a grandson dead. He's, he's, he's like got his daughter moving, to mother, moving some 15 year old kid in there, getting them all on drugs and all this shit. And Grandpa, how you did to deal with this shit? So, so he better leave an apartment over there and you know. By that one casino over at Gold Dust, right across the street from Gold Dust. Yeah, right there, rid of the apartment. Uh -huh. And so we stayed in the house till they finally just, we, put, we couldn't get the electric back on because they just couldn't put it back on. So Myrna set the telephone pole for our fire. <laughs> So she said, well, if I set it on, they'll have to come out and inspect it, and I can talk to that guy and show my And it worked, it worked. I mean, she got the telephone. I know, right? She got, she got the telephone pole on fire, and they, they show up, put out the fire, yeah, all come to the car. And so she talks to them to be hooking the wire, so we got power to the house. Up on. <laughs> we got the last two long. Finally, they came and they just took the meter and everything from the house. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of this. Well, so wait, so she sold the house. Well, yeah, yeah but the, the, it takes time to get people out of there and stuff. If you want to stay, you're staying, you know. Okay. Then, okay when she sold the house, what happened? Did you guys just, after that, Did grab you just food? leave her? No, my father walked off to the apartment. I tell me about when Tony was when she stabbed him. And that was a little bit after that. Okay. Me and Cassie you know, over there on Pyramid Way, right there where to the Stargust is now, uh -huh. or whatever it's called, Silversburg. Uh -huh. There used to be an apartment complex there. Well, you were just born. Uh -huh. You were just a baby. And so we got that. I ran the laundry mat downstairs, you know, closed it up and opened it up, and we were working there. Well, my dad totally wanted to move in. Okay, move in. And told him he was an asshole, but so was Myrna. Myrna was nobody to fuck with. No, no, she was a dangerous woman. He was sitting there one day, and he's drinking beer, and we're watching TV, he's laying on the couch, he's drinking beer. And he's telling Myrna, get him a beer, and hurry it up. I'm thinking, this ain't gonna go last long. And then, then she gets him a beer, and he's pretty well gas now. And he goes, get it faster next time and spit at her. Uh -oh. She goes, I'll get it for you. She <laughs> walks over, produces the kitchen guard, grabs a butcher knife, and comes stabbing that motherfucker, just stabbing him. Blood every damn way. We thought he was dead. So we loaded him in the car and put him in a dumpster behind the nugget. <laughs> <laughs> and we left that. And we jumped in the car and we went to Palmdale. I thought it was all over at that point. You know, he was dead. <laughs> he was done with that. And I didn't see him no more after that for the longest time. And so we went on then 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 we got so we got then we came back to Reno and she got with a guy named Al Walker. Oh yeah, that's another one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so we moved over on Holcomb. Uh -huh. I never, the whole time I was with your mother, never did we ever live anywhere. Myrna wasn't right there. Whether it was in her house or our house, Myrna, she was there. <laughs> no, she was there, but yeah. She was dragging me everywhere. <laughs> Kathy was still home because she was just a homebody. She, yes. she just wasn't into it, you know, and I was all into it. <laughs> yeah, let's you know, go, I'm going to stay home. Honey, I feel that you're going to come along. She was just uh, a baby. Me and Philip, me and her for the year old, you're going out with your mother. She was a baby, so then, so we, we, went, we went, moved to California and then we had an earthquake. 
Uh -huh. Big that big earthquake in seventy. He was just a baby. Uh -huh. The great biggest earthquake in LA. I mean the hospital across the street just collapsed. All the freeways fell. And the next morning I said, I'm out of here, I'm dealing with this. <laughs> so me, you and your mom jumped in the car and we headed back to uh Reno. Well, Bernard come right along. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, so we got a place in she met our locker. And, and so we got a place over the Hulk, Hulk Boulevard there. And they hung out at a bar down at the corner. Mm -hmm. But one day here comes Brenda. And y'all would do is she started putting on her motorcycle boots there with stubble. <laughs> <laughs> she comes in, she's just mad as a damn cat. <laughs> and I said, what the hell is going on now? She's putting on them cowboy boots. She's going to go, she goes, she goes, she, 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 she thinks, he thinks that I knocked that woman off his lap in that bar right until he walks through this door. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> she's got a baseball bat. <laughs> she's she's got to that. This guy she was dating, she oh, was a bar and there was a woman at the bar, so she oh, came okay. home waiting for her. He comes through that fucking door, she hit him in the head, so damn hard with that baseball bat, he falls and falls all in convulsions. <laughs> she crawls up on the desk, the countertop jumps off, busts every one of his ribs, <laughs> and then has him arrested for domestic violence. <laughs> <laughs> they got away with it. Real careful with murder. It's, it's some crazy shit. I mean, I'm just like, damn, why do you gotta do that? <laughs> and yeah. dad was there, like, you know, right there, you gotta be But when she went to the night house the first night, see, because we went to LA, I know we, yeah, we went to LA, and the most vehicle used to be on Kiski and uh, right there in the corner there. Uh. And, uh, we loaded them because back in that day, you take bar biscuits and see it's just, 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 just devastating. <laughs> and she's driving, we're driving in the Marvel's beautiful 1964 Ford Galaxy, white interior, white up, black on white, really nice car. <laughs> and all of a sudden, boom, I'm going across the old flight inside the motor vehicle with them. I said, get out of the car, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> She goes, my field, my field. <laughs> and we got two grocery bags full of pills. I said, grocery bags, Matt. She tried to open the truck. I go, the car smashed up. It ain't open. And the cops are coming here. Trying to I said, let's get the hell out of here. She goes, I'm not leaving my drugs. I said, well, you're on your damn own mess. <laughs> they showed up when they're trying to get a pill. And they said, you got to be nuts. So that was the first trip to the nut house. She got 90 days in the nut house and tried to go to prison. For saying for her pills. Yeah. <laughs> but she is crazy. She's crazy. Yeah. crazy. What's Poppy doing? What's Walter doing during all this time? I and remember going, he was dating going, Peggy going, for a little bit. Just going to work. Just going, going to work. Just working. Just going to work. Coming off. He was always, Walter was always straight, never high, wanted not to do with nothing. Walter was always a loner, never had friends. Mm -hmm. Always a straight of the loner. Yep. Yeah. You know, but then my mother and or, Uncle Vaughn would get together, and oh. Maggie, oh, oh God, <laughs> and then they'd get full of them pills, you know, and then Lauren have his 55 Chevy chain to the pole, the fucking telephone pole, because they're trying to be possessive, and he changed it and all up to that little pole, shit, everything, it's just crazy, <laughs> and it went on and on, but they, cause they're all long, long line of roofers, you know, they taught me my foot say the roof, that's the first time I ever got with roofers, Daddy John got me that, that Daddy was... John was a very outstanding man, he was, was no... he the one without the fingers? No, he was had there finger... somebody with uh, fingers? He had fingers, it was like, like, stone, <laughs> I mean, even, she, him and Uncle Juan taught me how to roof, but that dog was a hell of a roofer. So one day we're up on the roof and we're roofing. And some of the younger roofers down looks like talking shit at that dog. That dog said, I advise you to start moving. Uh -huh. You know, because I'm about three seconds from throwing this axe and splitting your head wide open, dude. Is that you serious? You can run that gun, shoot that axe and just flung that motherfucker and nail that motherfucker. That dog was a no nonsense player. He demanded his respect. That's very quiet. Dad. That's why you figure a girl because he yeah. Very quiet. Just like Walter was very quiet. Walter didn't want to hear none of your nonsense. Then we put up with none of your bullshit. <laughs> then we we'll hear me crap. So he had his hands full with Myrna. But he always <laughs> loved Myrna. He always loved Myrna. Yeah. He put up with more than I would ever put up with. <laughs> and I mean, they stayed together right to the end. I mean. Yeah. 
But uh, they lived, you know. And then the parents, they, they were a whole other side of the family. Mm. They were all nuts. They were all riffers. They were all nuts. Too. Yeah, riffers. Long line of riffers. Our family comes from a long line oh, of riffers. Oh, they were all yeah. riffers. Yeah. That's, That's why I told him, Daddy John taught you everything, yeah. you know, you yeah, knew he, about. He taught me it all. We used to track the home there in Bombay. Bombay was just. Tell about how he used to drink his wine and his cigarettes and all that. Oh, he'd keep his wine on the perfume bed day, lay on the couch when we were living with him. We lived in a one bedroom house, me. Your mom, you, you, that's where the earthquake happened. Uh -huh. He was just a baby. We had the bedroom. Nanny always sit, sit well, on the couch, couch and seven days. I'm going to lay on the other couch. Uh -huh. And he'd keep his bottle of wine on the... The floor? On, on the, the heat. He a bit to keep the uh -oh. floor. <laughs> he would just drink that. And he would light a cigarette, a Paul Mall cigarette. He would okay. light it in the morning. And not use another mess the rest of the day. One night after the other. Yeah, yeah. One night after the other. Never use another match. One in the morning. Yeah. And then he smoked them down too. But you always find a nanny in the spring radio asleep. Sleep passed out on the pills. And then passed out all on the <laughs> damn pills. Because they would get messed up on pills. <laughs> me and Walter. How Walter put up with so long beyond me. Oh, uh, he'd come home from school. Because he would go to, to a telephone company school. Yeah. You know? And I dreaded those days. I dreaded those days. Because... It was all bad because it was like he's gone, you know. Like, well, the cat's away. And they, one time he came home, grandma had, had a broken leg, and she just found out she's diabetic. She's passed out, and her face on the kitchen floor at the trailer inside a lemon meringue pie. Nanny's passed out on the toilet. Um, I don't know what mom's doing. The house smells, reeks of weed, and the, the glass uh, water coolers things that they were glass then busted all over the floor and grandpa came home to that. We had more uh, but Walter had more prescription in his name. I showed the murder gift. I showed her my mind from Dr. Hansel Plaza. Yeah. But he, she gave she goes to the doctor. My husband he just didn't <laughs> get all these prescriptions and he never took a pill. He wanted nothing to do with it. <laughs> you know, and he wasn't one to argue and yell and fight like I do. I go off the hook. I, my kids frustrate me so damn bad I want to choke on her death. Yeah, but, me too. But uh I mean, it, you know, it, it was all good, and then I remember everything was going good, and then, then me and Kathy started having trouble, uh -huh. and that's when uh, I said, you know what, I've had enough of this, I'm out of here, uh -huh. and that's when I am walking out, she goes, well, what am I supposed to do with this kid I'm carrying? Uh -huh. I said, now you're telling me you're pregnant. I, 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 thought, she, I, thought, I thought she was lying, <laughs> but she wasn't. <laughs> and so then, then it was like you so we, we, we well. continued to stay you know, with garbage. <laughs> well. and then you was born, and then right after you was born, we left. Bernard Paul was right away. Uh. Were you ever married? To me and Kathy? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We were, we were married. Okay. I don't know, four or five years, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. I think I think up to I was about 21. And then the, 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 the hell in the wheelbarrow. <laughs> And so that was it. We, I mean, we always came pretty much fitted, but the, oh, always. You, you know, there was nothing. You know, I was young. I didn't know what I was doing. She didn't know. She was, didn't know what. We didn't know what we were doing. You know, it's, you know, it's like Marshall and his girlfriend. I just can't get with your girl. You're broken pants. I, you, you ain't a man. You ain't doing shit. <laughs> but well, I wasn't a man. My first job was Safeway for fifty-two dollars a week. You know, forty hours a week, fifty-two dollars is all you made. I made a buck and a quarter hour. That's all you made. Try to raise a family on that, you know. Yeah. But uh, so crazy shit, it was always something. But, but Murder the Balls, it was always. But I've had a lot of fun with Murder. Me and Murder, we, because she was on the 40s, you know, so she was really wild. And they were still into the biker scene, like we go to go Oakland and pick up pills from the, from the Hells Angels there and shit. And it, it was all. And then, the, the Peggy and Mom was always fighting. They, 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 were, they were just. They would not. Grandma down. said if, if Peggy wasn't happy in that, I think he whipped her yeah, ass once a month. She went, needed it. it yeah. It went, at, it went about. And they stuck together for a long time before Phyllis came along. And then he even remarried her years later. Years later. Like and then years. there was a, a pretty decent lady that lived where we lived on Jesse in the house next door. There was a single woman that lived there. Uh -huh. There was a pretty. Pauline? Was it Pauline? Pauline, Pauline. Pauline I remember. Myrna hit her uh -huh. because Walter and her had a little mm -hmm, thing yeah, going. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> because whatever Walter was, he liked his porn too. Yeah, he, he did. He loved you didn't his know porn. that? Grandpa loved porn. Oh, he, oh had, yeah. he had a collection of porn from hell. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I remember seeing Dirty Records. 
Uh, he had real to real, man. He had real to real, man. He had movies. He was in this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gentlemen but, on the but, street, but, but, he, 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 he was probably he, a husband. I've never seen him with another woman. I thought he was yeah. faithful to mother. Yeah, he was. Yeah. I mean, he, he did what he did. But it, it he, did, he, to he used to come down to the he was in the Navy. He did a long time. Navy. He was in the Navy. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. You said Marines. I thought it was the Navy, too. Yeah, the Navy. I thought it was the Marines. No, the Navy. No, it wasn't the Navy. Navy. He was a sailor. That's why I said the water. His first career was in the Navy. And then he got went to work for the phone company. So the he nanny, nanny got him. I could have sworn it was the Marines. No, because it was the water. No, it's the Navy because it was the water. But I might have messed up and said Marine. No, he's always told me No, Marines. it was the Navy, because Grandma used to joke about him being afraid of water. Well, no, I've got a card that says that he was a Marine. No, I got one that says Navy. I did. I'll go. No, I'll go. let me see. Go ahead. Keep talking. Let me see. I'll I see him in his neighbor's sailor, sailor's outfit with his white hat and his sailor's yeah. outfit. It was in the Navy. He was yeah. in the Navy. He might. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't think the Marines, but yeah, the Navy. He was in the Navy. He served quite a while in the Navy. And then he retired out of the Navy and went to work for the phone company. He retired there because he got every one of us a job in the phone company and every one of us screwed him over. <laughs> he quit. From Kathy to everybody, not me, I never went to work at no phone company, but Kathy's best friend, all that, you know. But I mean, Bob, all of us, I, I just never could understand. They, they, were, they were so different, the night and day, but then again, they were married they were young, at 14, 15 years old. They were married young, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and brother put him through living hell. I mean, the only time, but the only time, the, the one time I had to see him react, you know, that's when he slapped her in her eye, with, and that's when he just got the phone call about the house being gone, and he was going into the streets and all that. <laughs> and she moved totally west in with him still there. Uh, he had his damn feel. He hit her right the eye with that bunch of her guy that told her, you get away from me. <laughs> he was done, he was done. But then when her told that, she, she said, she sat totally west, she went, we went back to Palmdale. Then when we came back, she moved in with him at the apartment across from the... Uh -huh. Stardust, whatever that casino is out there, it's into yeah. that apartment. And then me and Cassie went to the house in Sparks. Uh -huh. And the very first night, real nice house too. The, the, the really well kept house. But the very first night, we have a big ass party in the house. <laughs> and the very next morning, the landlord of the house uses this key and walks in. And we got people laying all yeah. over the place beer cans, beer bottles. Balls, everything. <laughs> she, she gave us all money back. She said, get the hell out of my house right now. You had, it was last lasted one day, other than that. She, she had no right walking in with her No, kids. but yeah. But but she, anyway, she gave all money back. She said, get gone. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So the whole time I was married, Kathy said, but never not once that Myrna was not right there. Uh -huh. And how me out I'm still in, teach me how to steal, teach me how to stop the, but Myrna was in the credit card. She always used to get boyfriends to steal their credit card. And then we would go on shopping sprees from hell. <laughs> you know, and she, she'd get them out of mailboxes. And, especially around Christmas time, all that crap. She, she ended up getting a bunch of credit card fraud. Did she? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, the, 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 the long time, she went to, to prison for a short spell at that point. Uh -huh. But then after that, we went, she went, to, she went to the nut house the first time, and then it was always the nut house. Always the nut house at that time. Yes. You know, like one time we're up in Tahoe, and we're walking out of the store, and she turns around and grabs a whole arm full of expensive jackets out the rack. Blow it off, you know, like she gonna get away with she's that. She's invisible, that's what I told her. She's invisible. She's so, back in those days, you didn't have cell phones and shit like that. You know, communication was more face to face. Yeah, yeah. So I had to go back to the room and tell Walter, burn us in jail, you need to bail her out. You, know? <laughs> you, know, you don't right. want to be the one to kill a message. The only time Walter ever asked me for anything was when I was in prison. I never had a visit at that time, the whole time. They called me out for a visit. And it's Walter. I'm like, why on the hell is Walter <laughs> You know, I mean, we got along, but it ain't like we was buddies or yeah. we had anything in common, you know. He didn't disrespect me and I didn't disrespect him, you know. I mean, so I, I see him sitting in the left, what the hell is this now? And it was, uh, what had happened is he was watching you. Yeah, and your mom was dating her cousin up in uh, Seattle, Washington. <laughs> Her, her cousin? Yeah. And uh, 
Walter couldn't get a hold of it, so he couldn't get your arm broken because he had no paperwork. Uh -huh. I know I had to kill him to have to come ask me for favors. And he did it. He got to tell you, he goes, you think you can sign a paper giving me permission to treat uh, Michelle? Because I can't find her mother. She's off of Seattle. So I said, yeah, I'll sign that right over to you. Because you know, he broke the arm in a swimming pool. Or yep, something. Yep. But I know that I had a great wall for that. I said, but I was the only one that could give that permission. <laughs> but he told us about this back in the business. <laughs> Because they're going through the search and to be frisked. Yeah, I have it. And you know, they, they were all, it was tight. They were, you know, I go to all mother was straight up crazy, but they uh -huh. were tight mother and sister. Uh -huh. And then we had to put Peggy in the mix, and then it was all over. Then mother was forever taking a hammer up next door to Pauline, trying to beat the garage in, beat the doors in, accusing <laughs> Walter of having an affair. I don't think he was having an affair. They talked over the fence once in a while. The murder of mine, it was like, the murder just hated this woman. This woman just hired and hired. She hated Verna too. Verna, but how? Verna, Verna. She Myrna. hated Verna too because yeah. she thought Grandpa was fooling around with Verna too. <laughs> but I never seen him do anything that but go to work. <laughs> you no, know, I haven't seen him do go to work every day, you know. Come home and deal with the billings as Nanny too. Nanny was, yeah, yeah, they were ample. But I mean, they, <laughs> they had on the pills, popping the pills. <laughs> they had on the drinkers' wine. They didn't like him drinking. You know? and yeah, and they didn't like no drugs, boy, but they sure be drunker than any drunk I ever knew on the pills. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah, they were. Matthew goes, Grandma was a pill popper. I said, Oh my God, Matthew. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody in this world. That exists well, at not. this time that could take could outdo grandma on her pills and ain't never nobody took the kind of pills grandma and them took. They don't even give them out nowadays. It ain't happening. They don't make them anymore. Well, they ain't happening. Well, they make them well, not like was, the ones. Well, no, we, the we, class we, of we, 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 we would take black music and cross tops to stay high. And then we take the bar bits to get down. You take a bar bits to it's like taking a gorilla pill. You take your fucking invincible. You take like one time. Murray, <laughs> and loaded his butt. Murray goes, let's, we go, let's go to Oakland and we'll get some pills. <laughs> and I said, okay, so I bought myself four plastic bells, chase it down with six pack of 16 ounce curves. And most people can't even take one plastic Plast bell. Yeah, no, I yeah. I bought four of those bean green ones. Oh, they had green ones and red ones. Yeah, <laughs> green meanies we call the green yeah, ones. And I take that. And I said, let's go to Oakland and get some more medication. And I said, okay. <laughs> so, uh, I forget, see, I forget my, what I'm saying. <laughs> that's okay, man. That's okay. I do that too. Drive to Oakland. Yeah, go on to Oakland. Pills. Get more pills. Yeah, and then I'm trying to think about the, think that's the rest of the story. That's the story about that. My, <laughs> mind, no my mind is going, but, uh, oh, before we left, because Walter bought Kathy a 63 Chevrolet Biscayne. Uh -huh. So that's called the dog. So I, but I had a flat spare tire. Uh -huh. So there was a corner on the station right there across from Alberton. There was a little gas station there, kind of a little gas station there. Uh -huh. So I go in and I said, fix this flat tire for me, a spare tire. So he plugs it, throws it in the truck. Well, we get on top of it, going into Sacramento, we get ahead of Oakland. We get up on top of that path and I get a flat. I pull over, I open that truck and that flat tire flat. Uh -huh. Man, I was so damn mad. I pulled them plastic bells anyway. Uh -huh. I finally got that tire fixed. I said, we're going back back there. I, was, I went back. I drove that car straight through the glass window of the fucking gas station. I threw that tire at him. said, you'll fix this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you stick me out of a bag. Where did you start? You're going to get out I killed him. He'd be like this. Because them pills make you crazy. Crazy, crazy. But it was a war. It's like a PCP kind of the crazy. Yeah, I mean, crazy, crazy. And then Murder you said, I said, okay, let's go. Let's go get credit cards. Let's go to the bar. I'm like, oh, right, here we go. I'm going to be the goddamn bar. <laughs> so we go to the bar. And we go to the, the, the queer bars. Uh -huh. <laughs> let's, go, let's go to the queer bars. I'm going to get some credit cards out of these motherfuckers. And we're in there. She's grabbing her mouth like she always did. She had a mouth, make no mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then the boss is going to come over there kind of indignant and sit. So I get in the middle of the space and Mother says she got a long neck fucking Budweiser there. And Mother's looking at this bartender and talking, man, you gotta get out of here, you ain't being a sir no more. 
She took that bit about busting across his place to cut the living hell out of him. She said, now we'll leave. I said, God, we got away with that one. <laughs> then the other time, Walter buys this Oldsmobile. Really nice Oldsmobile. <laughs> so we're driving down 4th Street. Myrna stops at the red light and passes out. So we're shaking right in the middle of 4th Street at the light. Myrna's passing out, but I'm going to <laughs> And this fucker both tried to come flying down the street and rear end with us. I mean, it just implanted itself in the back of that old mobile. And she ended up winning the lawsuit. Because <laughs> he rear ended it. Yeah. He was passed out at the light. He was a little more and passed out at the light. So she actually got money out of that one. Hey, she used to do that when we at the trailer, like one of her last really bad wrecks. She ran into a telephone pole. The engine was sitting on the front seat with it. But I mean, it just smashed it. She, then, which ran into, you know her eye? That was from the DMV crash. Her uh, eye? The, you, you know how girls' eye didn't shut? Yeah, I had to cut your eye lid off? No, I don't, I don't you remember You don't remember that? that? Uh -uh. Like this car, oh, yeah, I, this I got it out of here. Uh -huh. I, I, this all happened on the same day I got this car. Here it was. Okay, we were living over at Minion Manor over there. It really, yeah. Do you know where that is? Uh -huh. Right on Sutro, where we used to live in those apartments on Sutro on nights in Sutro. Yeah. But uh, down more the, the hood. Okay. Like off of Montello, the, the, yeah. the housing, right down Ninth Street. Okay. Going towards Sparks. Okay. Oh, anyway, Myrna's there, me, I'm there, uh, Kathy's there. And so I said, well, give me four glasses of ale, give me six pack of 16 ounce curves. And I'm there. So Myrna's getting the load of this motherfucker on the down too. And she said, well, I'm going home. All right. She jumped in Walter's nice fucking car. <laughs> Hits the burst and drives it right into the farm. And then man, right straight into that building. Right straight into the front. Just smashed it like, up everything. <laughs> and, and, but she, so uh, she went to jail for that. Walter bailed it out. <laughs> but, uh, but after she did that, I'm all loaded now. So I tell Cassie, let's go downtown. And I'm fucking loading the hell and we're in Cassie's car now because I had a motorcycle at the time, so we're in her car. And I'm pulling up to the right foot of Calvary, but full speed out along the other rear end of the car. I hit the steering wheel, my bob teeth came out here, there's just blood everywhere. I go, Cassie, we're here in the car, it's all smashed up, steam and everything. I walk into the cow meeting downstairs there in the bathroom and wash some blood off my face. I'm just so tough. And I'm walking out of the bathroom car, grabbing my HR. So <laughs> you are the So what do I do? What the hell you mean what do you do? You smash out the toe of that car's out here, and then you can go walk in there, walk and walk away, and leave your wife sitting in the car. So you're going to jail. So they take me to jail, <coughs> go to the court. That day, they give me a year. Uh -huh. The next day, they put me on work detail out in the fifth area of the city, old city jail where your mommy flew across the street. Uh -huh. You know, and they put me out there to wash cars. And I'm, there's, a, there's a car seat sitting over there, I'm in the orange jumpsuit, but there's a car seat sitting there next to the fence with a little wire on there. Uh -huh. And I'm thinking, I'm not doing no year. <laughs> I bet I could swing off of that, get in that trucky river. And I knew Walter lived a mile down the river, right on the river, in a little shack, my friend Walter. Uh huh, uh huh, yeah, my so, father. So I was sitting there looking, and said, all of a sudden I said, I'm going for it. I, I hit that over that fence, I jumped in that damn river, and I just started swimming downstream, <laughs> back back and going in his sweatsuit. I got to Walter's house, <laughs> and I, this is when they ended up me and Cassie's uh, time together, too. Yeah. Because I got to Walter's house. I called out with him. I said, give me some clothes, take the door. I said, give me some clothes, let me get out of <laughs> And I left town and I, and I went up to New Orleans. And then I, I was working with a guy in New Orleans and he had a Vietnamese wife. And he goes, look, I'm going up to Alaska. He goes, I'm buying a bar and grill with rooms and stuff. He goes, uh, I'm selling everything. I manage an apartment building. He's in New Orleans there. He goes, I'm selling everything. He goes, I want you to come with us up to Alaska. You know, you can run the motel on civil for some stuff like that. I said, now nah, I got more important things to do in life than that. <laughs> what did I do? I go to Vegas and I go to prison. <laughs> <laughs> and so for six years, I, hear, I had to hear myself saying I got better things to do. All I had to do, I went to prison. What, what better about that? You know, I could have been up in Alaska living good, yes. but no, I'm sitting in prison, you know. Yeah. And yeah. I went to prison for six, seven years, whatever it was. Uh, for what? Huh? For what? For conspiracy to sell drugs. 
But I did conspiracy to sell drugs. I sold drugs. But I thought of selling them to the guy that owns the Tropicana Hotel in Vegas. <laughs> That's back in them days, and you know them were, you know. And so anyway, I take it two ounces of coke, and I delivered it. And then I wanted my money, and they told me, I'm not paying you. <laughs> I'm full of fucking pills and drunk. Said, oh yeah, you're paying me. <laughs> he goes, no, you ain't, you ain't, you're, you're not, you're, you're, you're in the wrong element here, dude. Yeah. You know, you can get out of here, it's just a back of field, you ain't. I said, you're giving me my dad money, I'm not a goddamn fool of this. Yeah, I'll give you money, so he had me arrested. <laughs> For some, some, selling the cocaine, trying to sell it. He said, he kept the cocaine, he said, I tried to sell so, the cocaine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they came me first, I took it to trial. I said, bullshit, this motherfucker been buying cocaine off me for all this little fucking time. He's sitting up here acting like he's some kind of citizen. And when the, and then, the crazy thing about it was probation, parole, everybody said, don't worry, this is your first offense, you'll get probation. Blah, 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 blah. So I'm thinking, I'm going to get probation. But the, all through the trial, they kept saying, this is a prominent citizen of Clark County, you the Tom County. This is a chance you asked about no good stuff. <laughs> there's, there's no way I was winning. There's no way I was winning. So a jury come back guilty. Uh -huh. But the, the, after they do that, you go and you, you have a meeting with parole and probation, uh -huh. and they decide between the DA and everything else. So when I go to court, the DA recommends probation, parole and probation recommends probation. I'm like, I'm out of here. <laughs> Just say, stand up, Ms. Levinson. I stand up. He goes, these other people might believe this is your first time. He goes, but I don't believe it for one damn minute. You know, under, under Nevada state law, I can sentence you to five years in Nevada state prison. He goes, how fun. And I'm waiting for to hear the suspension. And yeah, they suspended. Yeah, suspended, yeah. And I look at my lawyer and I say, what, what just happened here? He, goes, he sent you to five years in prison. I said, I've come to the jail 18 months like this. I go, what do you mean? He said, I said, everybody said probation. But the judge took it up. Usually the judge follows the DA recommendation, but he just said, throw away. Because that guy was, you know, he, he wasn't my brother and he got it. Yeah, yeah. And like he said, I told you you were in the wrong, and I've oh, always yeah. heard that. You know, be careful with something that says so you don't know what you're messing right. with. Yeah. And I didn't, you know, I yeah. just punk kid, they got a big shot. And you did that, you know, talk kind of back in them days, you know. Yeah. They didn't Talking. play with you. <laughs> and they showed me, they sent my ass to prison. And then, you know, they play worse, they go, well, you're a first offender, you only got five years. He goes, you'll get, you know, you'll do about 10 months. He goes, you got 18 months in the county jail, so you'll immediately go to prison. Pro bottle thing there. Uh -huh. So, okay, cool. They always give two year dumps to lifers. I go in the pro board, two years, then I'll see you in two years. I said, What? Two years, <laughs> <laughs> son of a bitch, you. <laughs> so I thought, sat there another two years. Went back to pro board again. Two more years. <laughs> I said, Dude, I'll have this thing cleaned up in two more years. He goes, That's the, pri that's the whole point. <laughs> so that pissed me off. I left and I escaped from prison. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you later. I'm not staying. I'm not doing that. How did you do that, Dan? Huh? How did you escape? Because I this is Carson City State Prison. I'm not state prison. prison. The, 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 the dungeon. But they just built a state of the art prison just above it. Uh -huh. But they still used the, the, the cafeteria from the old prison, but they moved us all out of the old prison because we tore it down in a riot. Uh -huh. So they moved us up to the new one, which is all electronically controlled and everything else. Well, when they let me out on the yard, I noticed that they hadn't completed the guard towers yet. Uh -huh. So, so I hear what Lefty Rogers say. Lefty Rogers was Skippy, Skip's best friend. Okay, Skip, you remember Lynn and Skip? Yeah, yeah. Dad was in prison with Skip. He met Skip before we met them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, so, so the Skipper. But, but <laughs> we're all sitting Small around. World, and Lefty Rogers, he's already been in there like 18 years. <laughs> And about six of us said, well, fuck it, let's escape, let's just escape. I said, let's escape then, fuck it, I'm all, I'm all in for that. <laughs> I only have a year ago, and I'm done with them. <laughs> I don't you know, like, so but it's still, it's still it was stupid, you know, I just figured, the whole time I was in prison, I looked like I, was, I felt like 
it was my duty to get out if I could. Now, you're holding me here against my will. It's like a prison hostage situation here. Yeah. If you open it, give me a break, I'm taking it. <laughs> so I did. Two of them tried to walk up the mountain, left the Rogers, and another one tried to walk up the mountain to Tahoe. Uh -huh. and, they, and they turned around and turned themselves in. And they, you know, you're a prison 18 years ago. Put my old business outside of the world. They live real friends, it's cold up in the mountains. They came out and took themselves to. And everybody got caught the same day except me. Because when I got out, I thought, no. I said, they checked the plane, they checked the train. I said, but they don't stop freight trains. So I jumped on a freight train and I rode back, back east. <laughs> and I said, they didn't catch me for 18 months. And then, then that's because Renee turned me. Uh huh. Some girl turns him in. They wouldn't have caught him if somebody turned him in. See, Renee, that Renee was what woke me and your mom up, basically. Uh -huh. Because your mom was always busy having to get a job, get a job. What kind of job am I going to get? I'm 15 <laughs> years old, get a job. <laughs> so, so she kept nagging me, get a job, get a job. Mm -hmm. well, okay, I went in the employment office and they sent me to the village restaurant, Chinese village restaurant that over there across the street from Reno High School. Uh -huh. So I walk in there and there's going to be a dishwasher. And I'm in the back, I'm putting on my apron, and here comes this fine looking a bit older woman, <laughs> fine, tired, and just look good enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not paying no attention to her, I'm just, that's just my first appearance. I'm just, this is hot. <laughs> so she comes in and she goes, who are you? And I took that bottle, I took off my head and threw that, and I said, I was your dishwasher, but I just quit. Uh -huh. She goes, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> I said, nothing. So I worked that day, and then after that she goes, uh, she goes, you want to go out, out tonight? <laughs> I said, I ain't uh, to the casino to go take in the show and have some drinks. I said, I ain't over now. <laughs> I said, how about this? She goes, with me, y'all. Uh -huh. No, because she definitely got money, real big money. So if we go, we get in front of the lines, and compass everything, all this bullshit. And I go home and I spend the night with her. <laughs> so I get up in the morning, I got to get with me and your mother lived in some valley in a trailer. Uh -huh. I gotta get my ass home, man. This is gonna be bad. So I jumped in the GTO, raced that motherfucker home. I get home and I know there's about two suitcases sitting on the desk. <laughs> so this can't be good. <laughs> and between the time I left Renee's house and the time I could get home, Renee got the number off the application and called your mother uh -huh. and said, Do you know where Marty's been all night? And she goes, He told me he's working graveyard. <laughs> she goes, No, he was sitting sleeping with me all night. That's how I was a Oh, you do. So I took the two suitcases, loaded them in the GTO, drove back over to her fine house, pulled up and walked in, bought the suitcases, and I just stuck with them. She goes, you know, that's how I wanted it. <laughs> Tell them about that mom pulled a gun on you. She tried to shoot me. <laughs> this was that time. I was working at the Gold and Silver restaurant. I had a long time job there. And then at that time, I did, Danny, Danny, John, me and Kathy and you were all living together. Uh -huh. Well, me and Kathy were out of the house, a little bit out, you know. Yeah, but then she calls me up and says, oh, uh, can I pick you up from work today? <laughs> and I thought, well, yeah, I guess so. I don't know why not. <laughs> she pulls up. I want to get in the driver's seat. And she goes, no, get in the passenger seat. So I get in the passenger seat and she dies in my office. This is she your family. She said, I said, where are you going? This ain't the way it is a house. What, what, what's going on here? So and so told me that I was a fairy. Next thing you know, she pulls a gun out. She goes out to the car door. I said, are you out of here living up in the fucking mine? I can't get the fuck out of here. Get out of the car. That's the end of it. I'm done here. I'm done with this fucking too much. I don't want to deal with it now. Get out of here. 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 Get out <laughs> but it was, you know, it was crazy. They were crazy. It was wild. Make no mistake. When your mother, grandmother was in her forties, she was wild. You know, and she just took me out of her wing, and I was, well, I see more of her than I did Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were out nowhere. I'm like, come on, Marty, let's go. Let's go, Marty, let's go, Marty, come on. Uh -huh. Yeah, I probably became one of the best chocolates of gold in the world. There wasn't nothing I couldn't take it. Never ever got caught one time in my life. Yeah. And I used to tell your mom, don't ever do nothing wrong. Uh -huh. And I used to say, whatever you do, don't ever steal nothing from Kmart. Uh-huh, they grandma did too, and I told people that, and Jenny got busted. I said, don't do that. So anyway, I take Kathy to the store. 
I understand she stole the stuff, but can we just pin it on me and let me go to jail so she can go watch that baby because I can't really do it. And they let her do it, but they let us do that. They let me take the blame. And I, I told her to do it. So can I take the blame? So I went to jail for that one. <laughs> my mother had never been to jail. So I, I took the blame for that one. I told her, just don't steal nothing. Just don't do anything. You, know, you just ain't got what it takes. You didn't get those skills from your mother. <laughs> you know, when she got out her cross tops and shit and speed and shit, she just sit there and, you know, do a possible <laughs> and whatever. My murder, my little girl, and we're hired and go for three, four, five days. <laughs> but the very final star when me and Kathy was, we were living on, we were living up on, I bought the wig in there. We had an apartment there, uh-huh. and I was I was working. And I came home from work, and you and me there, you lived there, and me, you and mother, uh-huh. we in the apartment there. And I get paid, and the next day is rent. Uh-huh. So I get paid, so I got the rent, uh-huh. and they're all wired up, <laughs> and I need to have to work in the morning. And I, so I'm not gonna wire up. So I go to bed. Uh-huh. Well, I get up in the morning right. and they're still not back. Uh-huh. And you're there and I'm supposed to be at work, but I got you and they're still not back. <laughs> I thought, well, I'll go down here and pay your rent. I walk in the pavement, get in my wallet, and my book is empty. Uh-huh. Said, You've got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Later that day, here comes, yeah, but- <laughs> here comes Kathy and Murray in. <laughs> and I go, you took my money out of my wallet on the gamble, but how the hell do you think we're going to pay rent? Uh-huh. And she said, she said, well, will you pick it out? Uh-huh. I said, well, right now, you know what I'm going to do? Uh-huh. I'm going to go get myself a newspaper and a pack of cigarettes. Uh-huh. I walked out to the interstate, stuck my finger out, and put it back, back east. Yep. <laughs> and I'll put enough distance between us where we don't get back together now. Because we break up and get back together yeah. like a roller coaster. Yeah. You know, it was constant. <laughs> You know, Kathy could be her, you know, it was confident. <laughs> yeah. We had our knockdowns and drag outs too. <laughs> but, uh, but that was the last thing. That's when I said, no, I'm out of here. And I said, bye. And I walked off. <laughs> that them say, I walked off. And that was the end of that. <laughs> and then after that, I went to prison. Then when I got out of prison, she wanted to get back together. Uh-huh. We had checked it out, but I told her, you know, I'm a different person now that, I mean, no, I'm not about to sit here and be a homebody. It ain't happening. <laughs> I'm just been in prison. I think you're, you're living in Walter's trailer at this time. I'm not living in that. Because he finally bought the trailer at that point. Mm-hmm. I said, no. I said, no, this ain't going to work. <laughs> so I said, oh, it skips a couple of days. And she said, well, we can make it. We can make this work. We can. I said, no, I just don't believe it. I said, no, I've been locked up for seven and a half years. I said, there's things I got to do. (laughs) (laughs) It ain't sitting here playing house. So, you know, we tried to put my mom out of here. They said, you know, let's be realistic about this. Well, when did Sarah come along? Sarah came along, mom, and mom got with uh, Billy Booth. Billy Booth. Dad knows some more about Billy Booth than I do. I know Billy Booth. (laughs) A little tiny kid. He's a dick. He did a jerk. There's no punk in prison, too. He was. He didn't snitch. Snitch. Punk. Yeah. He fucking, you know, he, he was, he was, he was, he came, he came in prison when I was in prison. And, um, uh, one day, he, he, you know, people didn't like it, but, Was that some guy Smokey or something? Smokey. Big, big hell's angel. Smokey. Big boy. Six, 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 beastie. Mm. A friend of murder. Mm. <laughs> they had a friend of mine though, he was a good yeah. friend of mine too though. But, but he didn't like, Billy Booth was out of sexual relations and shit, but the Indians just didn't like that shit, you mm-hmm. know. And Smokey didn't like that shit. So Smokey staggled his ass up one day, <laughs> sliding to the fucking wall. So don't ever speak to me to come around right like me. No, we were just sitting there. I said, you know I don't like him, but there was no 
the between the, 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 me and Billy Booth ever. Bob and Billy Booth either. Yeah. And they're different night and day. Bob with Billy Booth are the two different night and days. You know? uh -huh. But uh, so, so Billy Booth thought he was going to save face. Uh -huh. And he was standing around the corner. The library was here. And he was standing around the corner with a big two by four. When Spokey, when Spokey come out of the thing, Billy hauled off and nailed his Spokey in the fucking head with that fucking two by four. They busted Spokey fucking didn't go down though. <laughs> <laughs> didn't go fucking down. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, Billy PC'd after Spokey and beat the living dog smile out of his ass. And he PC'd after that. Yeah. Yeah, then they got out to the day. Yeah. But Billy, when uh, I, I, I know, I, I don't know when mom like got with him. I only when I was in prison. When you were, when you were in prison. Yeah. See, I don't remember much of her being with him until we were all in Palmdale living when he had gotten out of prison, and then, you know, I don't remember. I mean, I no, remember that was a little bit. Prison. Too. That was before prison. Yeah, no, I remember Reno a little bit when I was a kid when his mom was pregnant with Sarah. But he was, he, did, he went in and out of jail sometimes. He wasn't in prison too long. No. I mean, because he was, I was there when he came and he was gone. Yeah. But he PC'd right up that smoke in the jail. No, he wasn't. Yeah, I just, I, well, maybe he was getting out of jail one time. I remember, like, he, you, he's the one that busted Sarah's teeth out. You were the one that found out with your man or boy. Because back in them days, NFP was one of, known as one of the toughest, toughest prisons in the country, one of the most deadly in the country. Mm -hmm. So you usually go to a medium security prison first, over there, NNCC, over there, that prison. Well, that's more like a college campus. They got work programs, you know, gymnasiums, tennis courts, and all of that. And I don't believe you should send kids to that. They need to learn a lesson, because they yeah. can see that that's like such a controlled atmosphere. You know, there's no violence really on that yard or nothing like that. It was it was fine. I always like. Oh, tell me what happened when you, yeah, I tell me when you first got to prison. Yeah, what happened with that guy? Well, oh, go ahead, finish that, but then you can, I'll tell you. But, uh, <laughs> so, but, but I was just young. I didn't know nothing about prison. I was in the bottom medium. I, was, I didn't do a damn thing. Uh. I've been there on the yard about two weeks. I hear a thing come on. This time, Green, I wasn't because Evans said number 13242. I still remember the number of the day. <laughs> Report to administration. I, I had to ask somebody where administration was. That's how Green I was. I just got out of the fish tank. I hadn't done nothing. And, but this just shows you how much power that guy in Vegas had, you know. I was always denied parole. Never ever did get parole. Never did. But, uh, so I hear a guy, he says, I walk in the station, boom, shackle me up. And I go, what are you doing? He goes, you're going to Max in SP. And all I heard was horror story about this motherfucker. <laughs> I ain't going to lie, I scared to death. No, I, I wasn't very big at that time anyway. I, so I skipped up. I was well, just, now you're going to find out, I'm trying to man up or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it, it, it was built inside these walls of these big old stones because it was built in 1862. It's just, just nasty, just. Just a hellhole of all the bad of the bad. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> walking out on the yard. But I was lucky because I I had a lot of involvement with the Indians in me, you know. I grew up with them, you know. So so I was considered part of the tribe. So being that way, I was also accepted into the brotherhood. You know, because yeah, 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 because I, I, I grew up with me, I knew all of them people. Plus, I'd served 18 months in the county jail, and my cellmate was the head of the Aryan Brotherhood. <laughs> so you know, it's a good thing to carry that name with you. Huh? So as long as I carried myself right, then I was okay. You know, you, know, you got to carry yourself right. <laughs> so they sent me over to Max. And then I was in the cell, and, and the Brotherhood comes to me, and they go, we're going to stab somebody in front of your cell tonight. I said, why would the hell you tell me that? I don't want to know none of that crap. And like, there's 21 cells on the floor. And I was in the 21st one. That's why they were going to hit me down at that end instead of the gate up at this end. <laughs> so I said to myself, I said, all oh, hell breaks loose. They said, I'm going to see that, dude. <laughs> and then all of a sudden the guards all come in and boom, 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 boom. So they started at the number one cell. One at a time, take them down, the interrogate them down at the warden's office. So they get to my cell, 
And he takes it down and he goes, this happened to my friend of yourself, so what do you know about this? Uh -huh. I said, I'm going to be straight up honest with you. I don't know nothing about it. <laughs> I said, but even if I did, I couldn't tell you and I wouldn't tell you. Yeah. I'll because i got to live in this place. It's really, yeah. And so they take me back up and out of every cell in there. All of a sudden I hear them say, Evans has said 21, back up to your door. I said, you got to be goddamn kidding me. And so I back up to the door, they take me down, they go, we're charging you with the stabbing of these two guys. I said, I was locked in my cell. <laughs> and then I say, so they told me in Max House, and that's even deeper in the bowels of the prison. That's where you get there, you're in, you're in hell. <laughs> and so they told me in there, and all I ever heard was horror stories about it. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> And so they, they put me in there, and I'm thinking, damn, you know. The next thing I know, here comes the two guys that actually did the stabbing. I thought, oh, they're going to think I stitched on them. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> but they, they, they knew I didn't. So then the brotherhood, they go, well, we'll keep your cigarettes and everything you need, because we know you held your mother and shit. So yeah. anything you need, you just send word to the yard, and we'll take care of it. Uh -huh. Cool. And so those two, that one guy was only doing five years, got life for it and shit like that. <laughs> but then the tear runner of uh, Max Hauser, this big ass motherfucker, nigga was on, just big, just bust out as a motherfucker. And you know, the only guy out here, he was a cell brother, so he was out all the time. Uh -huh. and, and a big homosexual, but <laughs> just huge, big, big motherfucker. <laughs> so one day, he, Alaska. he comes over and the big food tray thing in the door, he puts a shank on there. And he goes, when the door's racked in the morning, <laughs> you can either use that sink on me, or you can be my kid, it's your choice. And that's when I had the solstice. You always say, you know, what you will do. But, you don't but know when you're faced you... with it, you don't know what you're capable of. I sat down in my bed all night thinking, this isn't going to happen. <laughs> I, I don't want to kill somebody and spend the rest of my life in here. But, but, but there's something to me that ain't going to happen. And I had myself so psyched up that, that when that door was up, I, I, I stepped out and he come walking for me. I said, I'm telling you right now, dude, if you think I ain't fixing to fucking fuck you up, you're wrong. Uh -huh. He said, I don't think he got the heart. I stabbed him 26 <coughs> times. I only remember the first two times. I stabbed him 26 times. And then, so then they put me with grand jury Biden for attempted murder because he was in the hospital six months, but he survived. And I'll give the nigga credit because when he come back out of the tier, he goes, I got nothing against you. He goes, I gave you a choice and he took the choice. And so he told the grand jury that it wasn't me. And yet there was only two people on the cell. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but he did, he said, no, he said, no, it wasn't me. So I, just, so I said that then, I was getting close to the end of my sentence. I escaped. They gave me two years for that. And I, they, they said, do every bit of the five you're on now. And then when you're done with that, do every bit of the two. <laughs> I said, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> well, six months before I had to get out, they gave me a special pro here. Uh -huh. And they take me down to the pole board. And he, Armstrong was the head of the pole board. He goes, Miss Everson, we're going to give you a chance to we insert yourself into society by paroling you here today. Uh -huh. And that way we can help you adjust to society. I said, let me tell you something now, dude. I said, I got six months left and you have to let me go. And I don't have to answer to none of you. Yes. I said, so take your pro, stick it in your ass, take it back to my cell, and I want out of here in six months. Yeah, because you got paper free, clean. Paper yeah. free. I got, I started screaming at 1201, my time's up. Yeah. It took me until 2 o'clock in the morning to get out, and it was, it was snowing the beat hell, and they give you a $50 check. <laughs> so, I, so I walk away from the prison because there was nobody. I never had nobody pick, to pick me up or something. <laughs> I hitchhike in the Rio, and I go over to Whitey's and Denise's house. Uh -huh. I said, Look, I just got out of prison. I just be a place that it's storming like that. Whitey, oh, Whitey is your grandfather and dad's dad. Yeah, my okay. dad. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so I walk in there. I said, yeah, I just need to clear my head. I've been locked a long time. I go, I gotta clear my head up. Uh -huh. And so Whitey, Whitey, Denise calls Whitey in the bedroom, and then Whitey comes back out, and they said, uh, Denise and Dick are stick with her. I'm scared of you. You can't stay here. <laughs> I said, you know what? I've been seven years. Uh -huh. I got nowhere to go. I got a $50 check that I don't even know if I can cash. <laughs> 
And you know, my brother Gary's in LA, he might go there. Blizzard in this shit. <laughs> so I take my hat to the hitchhike, and I get to Carson City. I go, I thought, well, I'll go cash the fifty dollar check now. And I went in there, and they cashed it for me. Next thing I know, I wake up and I'm in a room at the casino there, and I'm hung over like a pig dog. But I've got drunk. <laughs> I look over at the night stand, and there's a piece of paper sitting there, and it's a receipt for seven hundred fifty dollars that they have in the cage for me and explaining that they caught me a room that I got too drunk and I was spilling beer on the table and shit, but I had won $750. Uh -huh. I thought, you got to be kidding me, I ain't got hit right now. I would have cashed that step of pissy. And then that's when I went to L.A. So I go to L.A. And Gary just got married to Sandy. That's his brother. Christopher just had a baby. So I spend the night on Gary's couch that night. Gary gets up on the work in the morning and he goes, Come ride with me to work. And he goes, uh, he goes, you can't stay at my house. Sandy's a scared of you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. I said, you got to be kidding me. He goes, but I, I'll try and you know, get you on where I work. Mm. He goes, to figure out what we can do. I said, you know what, don't bother. Mm. And I said, I'm so sick of him, this is, don't even bother. Yeah. And I just took off his hiking, and that's when I met Laura in Nashville. Mm. I was in Nashville. I told the brother to get some money, and I bought me a pint of whiskey. I went over to the shelter, took a shower, I sitting there drinking my whiskey. Then I went over to talk about a party gathering around the stage where I had to go over there and start drinking with them. <laughs> and, and, and before that, I, I, when I was in the blood bank, Laura's mother was in there donating blood too. And Laura was there. Well, I tapped her on the shoulder and I said, Give me a, let me bum a cigarette. So she gave me a cigarette. And like I was loud boys, I was fresh out of prison, I buffed like a and I wanna take a sip of nobody. I was loud, but I was obnoxious. So anyway, the Lord Bond comes out, I hear all the mother say, that dude over there most obnoxious man I've ever seen in my life. But then I was getting this whiskey and I'm over drinking with this dude in the car and here comes Laura and her mother. It's her mother's boyfriend in his car. And Laura. <laughs> And so we're sitting there talking and sitting. And so I said, Well, I got to walk over to the bus station to get my backpack so I got a sleep bag to sleep in. So, so I went and got my backpack and I said, About flying their car. They sent me a station wagon that line. I said, About flying my car. And I got up in the morning and I'm packing up my duffel bag. Mm -hmm. And Laura goes, Where are you going? I said, I'm out of here. I said, I hear there's work in Oklahoma City. I'm going to hitchhike over to Oklahoma City and go to work. Mm -hmm. He goes, what, so you're just waving? I said, well, yeah, what are you paying to do? I said, I'm just leaving. And then uh, her mom and the brother go, so you hear there's work in Oklahoma? I said, yeah, there's work in Oklahoma. Well, we got the car, so let's all go together. Uh -huh. And I thought, that's what we did. We all went together, went to work in Oklahoma City. Me and Lauren have been together ever since. That's been 32 years. <laughs> long time, long time. Well, uh, with that, let's finish this. <laughs> huh? Let's finish this one. This yeah, this. yeah, yeah, this one. So, uh, uh, we gotta say goodbye. All right, well. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Matt Bonta. I'm Michelle Uh, Stay classy.